G'day guys, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. Today we're going to go through part two of our Jenga players, go through the rest of the NRL, which includes the Roosters, the Titans, the Canberra Raiders, the Penrith Panthers, the Manly Seagulls, the Brisbane Broncos, the Dolphins, the Canterbury Bulldogs, and of course, the Parramatta Eels. Today's episode is brought to you by our proud partners in 2024, Neds. Go and check out the Neds app. You can follow the Rugby League Guru profile there and follow along with our bets. We got a little chicken dinner last week. Tommy Turbo, Ruben Garrick into the overs. You're looking at about $9 there. We're getting a little bit juicier this week for Mad Monday. We've got Lockie Galvin and young Blaze Talungi to cross at about 20 to 1 there. Prices subject to change. Go and check out the Neds app and follow along with my profile to see it all there. Bring in my 5'8", my partner in crime, her new favourite term, my sparring partner, Katmandu. Welcome in. Thank you. That was so bad. I loved it. I knew that. I, would, loved I knew it. I'd catch you off guard. Can I just let the everyone king know? King of Sting over there. Yeah, unreal. We've, Master of disaster. It, this is true. <laughs> this is true. Organized chaos embodied. <laughs> Love I've, that. I uh, I had a very dramatic fall yesterday, yeah. which I'm still reliving today. And then um, I've stacked it so many times today. Being a bit of a space cadet, but you know what? I think it's fair to say that I am still the Jenga player in this building. I think you are, yeah. I think you definitely are the Jenga player. We, uh, I just watched Kat have a pretty fierce battle with a uh, with a push sign on a door where she almost pulled its life to pieces just quietly. Um, now, I wish that wasn't true. But now, it before is. we get into our Jenga player, which of course is the player you take out from an NRL club and they sort of fall into a heap. You did mention that you fell into a bit mm. of a heap yesterday, and um, Can you tell the story. We spoke about yesterday on our walk that. Um, like I would rather fall in front of a hundred human beings than in front of ten tradies. Mm. Uh, it's probably the most. Uh, it's an all. It feels like they've got more eyes than yeah. the average person tradies. Yeah. Um. You took a real tumble yesterday. I did. So I parked about five hundred meters from the studio, uh-huh. and I had a coffee cup in my car. Yep. And I thought I've got time to kind of finish the coffee and and dispose of it before I get to the studio. So I walk past um, a cafe. There's a bin there. I'm like perfect. I'll dispose of my cup. I saw the bin. What I didn't see were the two steps that I needed to take in order to get to the bin. And I fell up the stairs, very dramatic, very loud, fell onto my knees. And, you know, I'm kind of there on my knees. The bin's in front of me. And I'm like, well, I'm here. Like I'll just chuck the chuck the, like cup. the Michael Jordan scene yeah, from Space almost, Jam. Yeah, 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 I looked exactly like that as well. It was as cool as that. And um I'm like, while I'm here, I may as well just dispose of it. But um, I avoided eye contact with everyone. But you know that it was dramatic when somebody leaves the cafe, comes out of the automatic doors, just asks me if I'm okay. And then the guy that was kind of walking in front of me when it all happened, he also did the whole like, oh, I need to save this girl. And it was very dramatic. But as you mentioned, there were not 10 tradies, there were about 25 <sighs> tradies on this long table that obviously all come from a job site and it went, you could hear a pin drop when I fell. So you you could hear my knees hit the ground as hard as they did and then when I got about 25, 30 metres away and they thought it was safe to laugh, the laugh was so loud. <laughs> so it echoed loud. through eternity. It, it hurt more than my uh, my throbbing knees. Day but, um, one here in the studio on Kat's first day, uh, I remember I tripped over a cord and Kat said to me, oh, we should keep track of who trips the most. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't trip that much, so that's okay. Little did I know, little Bambi on ice mm, over there has about man. 14 trips a day. She's a frequent flyer. I am a frequent flyer, racking up some points here it's, and uh, can't wait to buy some stuff. I don't know what happened to me, but this is, this is the norm for me. It's not that I need glasses. It's not that there's anything going on. You know, we've... It's just me. It's just who I am. It's a personality mm. trait and it'll come up many a time. I wouldn't change it for the world. It's actually one of the highlights of my day. It's unreal. Love that. That's great. Now, Jenga players, we're up to part two. We had a really good discussion last week and I think that last week we actually agreed on a lot of them. Yeah. I think a lot of them were very similar. I reckon the teams we've got left, I reckon there is going to be a number of disagreements Potentially. in this one. So I'm, uh, I'm keen to have a look. Now, me and Kat, we haven't actually shown each other who we've got for each team. We know the order we're going in and we've both done our own. So let's kick off with the Sydney Roosters. Um, Kat, I had two names written down here. The obvious one that comes to mind for me is, is James Tedesco. 
Yeah. He's the obvious one. Yeah. But I, I, you know what, I looked back to last season and I thought, you know what, when it all sort of turned around and they started to really fire shots in the finals, it all sort of came off the back of Sammy Walker. And I think that – I think James Tedesco is more important to this side, but I think without Sam Walker, they just lack that bit of creativity and strike in this mm. Rooster side. It means that you shift to Joey Manu or someone into 5'8". They've obviously got Sandon Smith now, which is great to have, but – Mm. I would have James Tedesco. I would have Sam Walker pretty high up there. Before I get to other guys that I would throw in there, who did you have? Was there, was there an obvious to you? Yeah, no, the obvious for me is Tedesco. Yeah. And I think I agree with you, but I also think they they underperformed last year. They mm. left a lot to be desired and Tedesco also left a lot to be desired and mm. I think that his performance kind of coincided with a lack of results on, on the team's part and so I think – He's looking really good. He started the season really, really, really strong in comparison to last and the Roosters are looking a lot better and yeah. I don't think that that is a coincidence. So for me, Teddy is kind of that key player. If he's not performing, Roosters aren't performing and he is also the target for so many teams. So uh, when he's at his best, he is a real, real threat to, to every other team. I think it's really interesting. A couple of years ago, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I'll just try and get you a quick little uh, sample of it. Jared Rhea Hargraves was actually like mm. percentage-wise, when the, like the amount of games that the Roosters won with JWH compared to the amount of games they won when he wasn't on the field uh, was pretty wild. So mm. JWH has to be right up there. I can't remember what the report was, but it was something like there's like a 20% improvement wow. or something with him and the side uh, over a long period of time as well, like 10 years of the Roosters being a premiership-winning side wooden spooners, back-to-back premiership win mm. sides, underachiever. Like just over a long period of time, JWH has been incredibly important. The other player that I would throw in there, Kat, uh, would be Victor Radley. Yeah. I think sometimes he gets underappreciated that, you know, when you have a look at the last few weeks, they've looked good. It's because Victor Radley's played 80 minutes mm. every single week mm. when they were winning comps. Victor Radley was playing big minutes at 13. Mm. The last few years when they've struggled, he's either been injured, suspended, one of the two pretty much the entire time, just hear bits and pieces. So I think he's really important as well. Uh, but I think James Tedesco yeah. has got to be the one, right? I think it's the nature of his position too. You yep. know, it's a crucial position but also that Roosters team on paper, they're so good and when they turn up, you know, yep. they are the best in the – they can be the best in the comp. They can, they can beat any team and I think – I just think Teddy is such a key part of that performance. Yeah, completely fair. All right, Gold Coast Titans. Um, I hate to say it, Kat, but they might have lost their Jenga player on the weekend. Yeah, um, okay, we're obviously going to agree on this one as well. Tino. Mm, I think it has to be Tino. Yeah. Um, I think he's one of the best forwards in this competition. They've obviously signed him on a uh, 10-year deal, so you Crazy. know that's how highly they – fuck, God, it's awful to sign a guy on a 10-year deal who's a big mobile forward and then within – less than 12 months does his ACL. That's – um, Yeah, it's real sad. Yeah, look, I, I, Tito's pretty young and I'm pretty confident he returns back to him his himself but, geez, it's a risk you don't want to take with a marquee player, isn't it? Yeah, he – I mean, he's he's the face of that team if you ask me. I think he's the most recognisable. He fronts so much of their media. He is obviously one of the key players on the field as well and – I've, I saw him in a foyer of a hotel once and I couldn't believe how big of a person he was. He was standing next to um, Des. He's enormous. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like it's just a no-brainer, that one. And I think we'll see the effects of that as the weeks progress as well. Yeah, for sure. I think we're definitely going to see. I think there's, you know, guys like Mo Fodder Waker. I've said it a few times. I think Jermaine Joliffe really steps up there. But just the leadership, I don't think you can really replace. Mm-hmm. Other guys in that team, um, I I think obviously Jaden Campbell's very important, but I think Kieran Foran's the next most important yeah. player. He's got the, that experience under his belt too. He brings yeah. that kind of leadership that I think someone like Jaden Campbell's a bit too young yeah. still. And you know what? Probably uh, – Probably in round one when Foz didn't play, I put a lot of their performance down to just lacking his experience. Mm. He was there in round two, Foz. They really struggled, uh, if not got worse. Um, it will be interesting, Kat. Fafita's the other big elephant yeah. in the room, obviously. Uh, he potentially returns this week, if not next. You like that one, I Jack? like that because he's such a unit. I'm not calling him <laughs> a big elephant. I'm absolutely not saying that. Nor I just, was I, to no, be fair. But, no, no, no. But uh, I couldn't agree with you more. And, in fact, David Fafita was born in 2000. I struggle to believe that because I think he's looked 30 
for five years. Like so, he, Dave Fafita was born in the year two thousand. Yes. Yeah. Right. I looked it up today. <laughs> It feels like he's been around for a while. I know. Like, I'm actually going to Google it again right now. I need to see it again. With no, 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 I think that adds up because he'd be no. 23. That makes sense. But Yeah. Well, he's um, 24. He was 24 in February. But that's just crazy. He's an absolute unit. And when he's on fire, he is without a doubt the best player on the, in, in that team, I think. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, Titans, I think it has to be Tino. Uh, but uh, those other guys, very close shouts there. Uh, the Canberra Raiders. Now, I look at the Raiders' side. They've got an incredible forward pack. Uh, they've got a lot of young guys um, in this squad, uh, especially in key positions. I, I personally think Jamal Fogarty is probably – he might not be the best player on this team, but I think he is the Jenga piece that mm. without him they would really struggle. Without his composed kicking game, mm. um, they would really, really struggle. And – I know I'm bending the rules a little bit here, Kat, but when I look at the Canberra Raiders uh, and as far as like uh, maybe not a Jenga player but a Jenga person, <laughs> I just think the attitude that Ricky Stewart brings to this side, he just brings a fuck you. We're going to hang in oh, yeah. and hang in and hang in. We're going to drag you into the gutter and we're just going to be tougher than you. Um, one of the real hallmarks of Ricky Stewart's career and just his attitude as a footballer, one of the lippiest players to ever play rugby league. Yeah. Um, I remember Matty Johns telling a story about when he made his debut in his first few games. I played the Canberra, the Canberra Raiders. Um, sorry, I think it was Andrew Johns actually. And he said that uh, he came off the field, rang his mum and said, take the Ricky Stewart poster down in my room. He just bullied me for an <gasps> hour and a half. Off. Oh, wow. Yeah, wild. So, Ricky Stewart, I'd have him right up there. But I think as far as on-field players, there are better players in the side. But I think Jamal Fogarty is probably mm. the key guy. Who do you have? I have Joseph Tarpany as well. Mm. I just yeah. – I think for me, Joseph Tarpany is, is a standout player. Most seasons, he's one of the players that everybody's talking about. Even when you, you talk super coach and stuff like that. Yeah. He's an expensive player, but he's very solid. So, I just think his role within that team is pretty crucial and – I'd imagine if something happened to him, they would feel the they'd feel the loss for sure. Yeah, hundred percent, they would. Yeah, very good shout. Um, I think the other player that I would just want to give a little shout out to, he's been the heart and soul of the Raiders uh, for a very long time, and he just fills a role every single week wherever they need him. Jordan Rapiner, mm. very very important to that side. Yeah, I think similar energy to um, Tarpany in that yeah. sense. So, you know, similar age, they bring that experience. I'll tell you what's really interesting, Kat. I think if we would have sat down and done this twelve months ago, I think we both would have said Jack White. Yeah, one hundred percent. But I think that's. What's also interesting is who who becomes the Jenga player now that well that I mean out. the other question is was he the Jenga player yeah. we thought he was I mean they they've started the season incredibly yeah, well young good. Ethan Strange just come in and done a good job uh, it's very early days obviously and I I still believe they do miss Jack for sure mm. uh, but it is interesting when you look at these Jenga players and who it is and then you actually see the team without them and you go well are they the Jenga, are they they're good players but yeah. are they the utmost important players that we sort of assume they are it's really interesting yeah it is. Uh, let's move to the Penny Panthers. Um, I mean, I think it has to be Nath. Mm. Um, but in saying that, we have seen the Panthers without Nath and, you know, they might not be as dominant. But I, st- I, I think even without Nathan Cleary, the Penny Panthers are still a top four team oh, just because yeah. of defensively how good they are. I think there is an argument out there for Isaiah Yo. Oh, we've, yeah. I mean, I don't have Isaiah Yo's games in front of me. But I reckon over the last four or five years or during this premiership, like, success that they've Mm. had, outside of being rested post-origin, I reckon he has missed – you could probably count the games on your hands. Mm. No, yo, I completely agree with you. I think he is so severely underrated as being a a key player in that side. But I also think – Yo is the type of player that someone like Cleary would actually go to for advice. He would yeah. go to him for those leadership qualities. You can see it if you watch any of these Panthers documentaries. There's a docu series that came out kind of covering that uh, when they were backing up their premiership win. Yo was a major player in all of that. And um, also from like a fantasy perspective, Yo is a great player too. So you can see how key he is to most of their plays. But 100% I'd say yo, but you, you can't deny the Cleary effect. Yo, uh, between 2020 and 2023, so across those uh, four seasons that they made grand finals, played 95 games. Wow. So when you think about it in just about or in three out of those four years he was playing Origins, so he missed out on a couple mm. of games backing up, he essentially hasn't missed any football. And you think about a couple of times in round 27 they rested players as well. Mm. 
So the amount of footy that Isaiah Yeo has played, and obviously that includes finals and stuff, so there is a few games clipped on there, but um, just he is just so important to this side. And I think he's mm. one of the smartest footballers around. I remember I had Nathan on the podcast who, after they won the 2021 grand final mm. card. Remember I said to him, um, if you had to pick one to stand by your side mm. for the rest of your career, Isaiah Yeo or Appy, and he went, he ummed and he ahed and he ummed and he and he actually ended up selling on Isaiah Yeo, which mm. surprised me. I thought he'd say Appy. Um since then, they've gone on to win another two premierships yeah. together. So pretty damn impressive. Yeah, no, 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 I'm a big fan of Yo for sure. I think, like I said, I think he's pretty underrated. I don't think he gets enough hype. I think people know he's good. Yeah. I just don't think they hype him up enough. But it's also because he's got such a chill personality and he's not yeah. the loudest in the team and it's usually those big personalities that everybody talks about. But, you know, he's definitely a Jenga player there. I think Isaiah Yeo is going to be one of those guys that ages really well in the history mm-hmm. of rugby league. I think we're going to look back on uh, the impact that Isaiah Yeo had and I think you're going to look back at the history books of, oh, okay, well, all of a sudden he became a lock forward in 2019. Yeah. Once he got used to the position, they went to a grand final, then won three premierships in a row. Mm-hmm. I think you're also going to look back at the list of players they let go of. Mm-hmm. You know, Mansell, James Tamu, Stephen Crichton, Api Kurosau, uh, like the list goes on and Jerome on Luay. and on and on. Jerome Luai. At some point. Um, in the midst of all that, you know, they've only kept two guys in the spine, Edwards and Nath and Isaiah. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Edwards is another one too. Like yeah. he's so – he's such a good player. It's actually a very fair shout. A lot of the times over the last few years in finals, like I remember there was – the only finals game they've lost in the last few years was against South Sydney mm. a couple of years ago. Stephen Crichton played fullback that night. Mm. Dylan Edwards wasn't there. So another very good shout, Dill. Uh, obviously a Clive Churchill medalist. He, he's done it all, Dill yeah. Edwards. So, yeah, really interesting, uh, the Penny Panthers. And once again, like once upon a time, I probably thought it was Appy. Yeah. Um, who obviously was our Jenga player for the West Tigers and would probably be a Jenga player in most of these sides. But he was able to leave Penrith and they were able just to get on with the job. Incredibly yeah. impressive. Um, this might be the easiest slam dunk of them all. Um, the Manly Seagulls. Mm. I, I mean, we've we've got the evidence, unfortunately, over the last few years via injury and whatnot that Tommy Turbo, uh, when he's not in this Seagull side, they are a shell of themselves. Mm. Um, there's been periods of time, like, for example, uh, 2022, I think it was, where uh, they lost Turbo and they, and they actually pulled it together and did really well. Then Jersey Gate hit and that all went to shit, obviously. Uh, but outside of that, like we, we saw them in 2021 look like absolute world beaters. This guy played one full season there. I think he played 16 games, won a Dalian medal, absolutely shit him. One of the most incredible seasons we've ever seen. Mm. I, I think that him and KP... I think they are the two most influential players to their football team mm. as individuals. And without him, Manly go from being top eight contenders to bottom five, bottom yeah. six. Well, we've seen Turbo turn Manly season around in that you mentioned that individual performance season was just incredible. And I've talked about it before, but that is the season that got me really into rugby league again after I'd spent some time (laughs) just over here dropping his phone. Uh, I'd spent some time overseas, was so out of the loop with rugby league, came back and it was Tom Travojevic that got me back into the game because I I say it like we were mates, but genuinely I looked forward to watching him every week. I do think there needs to at least be some uh, mention of DC as well and the role that he plays in that side. I think he is also one of the best in his position and I think for years he's been, you know, criticised wrongly for not being as good as he really is and and I will die on the hill that DC is one of the best halfbacks in the game. But I also think Garrick is fantastic and I think those three bring a lot to that side and without them there's no way they would uh, play as well as they do. Yeah, completely agree. Just just another, I think DCE is a fantastic shout. Um, just one more thing on Tommy Turbo for you to consider as well. Like not only is he so influential to this football side, you look at State of Origin. Yeah. Uh, the last series we was we won in 2021 uh, was, you know, the biggest series victory of all time in State of Origin. Tommy Turbo lit it up. Since then, um, I was just looking at it then. He's, he's only played the two games for New South Wales. Um, we lost both of them, but in one of them, he got injured after about five minutes. Yeah, I remember. 
it sucked. And we haven't even got close to winning a series since Tommy yeah. Turbo was fully no, fit. I think it's like to your point, Turbo is one of the best in the game. Yeah. It's across rugby league. It's not just in that manly side. But I think also it's fair to say that he's probably one of the most liked players as well. He doesn't mm. ruffle any feathers. He plays good footy. He does his job. But then when it's he's got to stand up and represent New South Wales, he always puts everything behind it as well. Yeah. Let's move to the Brisbane Broncos. Let's do it. I've got three names here that I'm pretty evenly divided on. Mm. I think I know who you'll say and I understand why. Who but do I'm, you I'm, think I'm going to say? I think you'll say Adam Reynolds. Yeah, I have two He's names. one of my three and yeah. I'm, I'm, as a, I'm actually evenly divided. Why would you go Adam Reynolds? Oh, well, I think um, we saw it was like day and night when he arrived at mm. that Broncos side. Yeah. Obviously, he left South Sydney and he, he left a, he left big shoes to fill at our side, which you yeah. could argue still are yet to be filled. But I think... Argue. You could just say <laughs> you that could, you they are highlight. yet to be yeah. filled. You could emphasize that yes. they are yet to be filled. But I think it was just very clear what influence he, he brought to that side, his experience, his skill. He is one of the best in the game in his position. But I also think seeing... What happened to South Sydney in his absence is also a sign that he is a Jenga player wherever he goes. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just don't think – you can't debate this. It just is. Yeah, I, I, I think obviously Payne Haas has to be right up there mm. uh, in this conversation and I think you could see the difference the other night without Payne Haas yeah. as well. Um, and I think that I think that Adam Reynolds is, you know, somewhat of a – a lesser player without Payne Haas as well. Mm. I think when Payne Haas there, it really hurts Adam Reynolds. Um, the other guy that I think should be mentioned there, and I know a lot of you are probably expecting me to say Reese Walsh, mm. which is fair. The way that they play, a lot of things are built around just getting Reese Walsh in good spots. But Cat, yeah. I still reckon Pat Carrigan is one of the best players in this competition. I think he's one of the, the best ball players. I think he's one of the toughest guys, one of the best defensively. Mm. Uh, you talk to players and just the way that he talks and whatnot, we've seen a little bit of it through those mic'd up segments and stuff. I think Pat Carrigan is right up there with their most valuable players. And if we could if we could put this Broncos side into a vacuum and just, you know, let them play out 10 weeks of footy minus each of these guys, I reckon there is a serious chance that they look the worst without Pat Carrigan and all these guys, which I know is a little bit of a bold take. Mm. But I just think he's, he's one of the best forwards I've ever seen. He genuinely is. That's a great is. shout. I actually hadn't written him down. I had Walsh and I had Reynolds yeah. and I totally agree with Payne being – a necessity to that side, especially the way that they are built right yeah. now. He's key to that side just like Walsh is. But Carrigan is a great shout. Just made me think when you when you mentioned Payne Ars there that we were thinking about the other night, I think as well for the Panthers, we actually didn't mention James Fisher-Harris. Who oh, definitely yeah. Definitely needs to be in that conversation as well. Uh, but, yeah, the Broncos are a really interesting one. Um, I, I reckon there's a serious world where it could be Paddy Carrigan, but very good arguments for a number of guys. Let's move on to the Dolphins, new franchise. Mm. Uh, came in last year. I was lucky enough to be up there to have a look at the facilities and everything last week. Very, very impressive. Doing fantastic things up there. Um, I think the obvious answer, Kat, is Hamiso, just because he is the superstar up there. But I'll tell you what, last year when I got to sit and watch them, and I know it was their first season all that, but... Mate, when Jeremy Marshall King wasn't on the field, mm. that team was an absolute shell of itself. Um, I think I would go with Jeremy Marshall King slightly over Hamiso. Hamiso is the cream on the cake. He's the icing. But, man, Jeremy Marshall King to me, he's the fucking cake. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. I think once again it's a testament to the role that he plays in that team, yeah. the position. That hooker position is so crucial and when it's done right, same as Appy, yeah. when you do it right, it can be the the actual game changer for a side. And Hammer is reliant on everything kind of working out in order to get the ball to him for him yeah. to do his thing, to show off his speed, to get those tries. Um, I also think Isako is, has yeah. kind of proven himself <laughs> to be a pretty key player yeah. in that side too. He's uh, – for a winger, he is wildly important, isn't he? And, you know, I, I think Osako to some extent sort of just personifies what the what the yeah. Dolphins are all about, that yeah. they, 
you know, he's one of those guys that was unwanted, wasn't being – like he wasn't being utilised by the Broncos or the Titans just mm-hmm. up the road. Comes there and he, I think he was – if he wasn't the NRL top point scorer, he was right up there. I think he was second top try scorer mm. to Dom Young. Um, yeah, he's an incredible player. The other one that I think is worth a shout and I reckon – I think this is his last NRL season, Jesse Bromwich. Um, oh, yeah. You know, we always talk about the Melbourne Storm and for the last two years all I've said about the Storm is that they lack punch through the middle. Jesse Bromwich is an ageing body. You don't you don't look at him and go as an explosive forward but, you know, he was the main forward in that Melbourne Storm side for a very, very long time. Mm. And I know it did coincide with other guys leaving as well but they just haven't looked the same since Jesse Bromwich has left and I look at the Dolphins pack who on paper is, you know, nowhere near as good as other packs in his competition. Mm. Just with Jesse Bromwich leading from the front, I think he's done a tremendous job. So yeah, JMK would be my pick, but I think all those other guys have to be very close. They're one of those teams, Kat, that I really hope in a couple of years' time, it's Isaiah Cartel we're talking about mm. as the Jenga player. I just yeah. I hope that he f- fulfills his potential and I believe that he will. Um, I really I hope that. we're talking about him in these yeah. conversations one and day. I do have to say similar to your Ricky Stewart call, I oh, mean yeah. you're a new side you're 12 months into the comp, the coach that you bring on board is so crucial to your success because you're not a, you're not adopting players and, and a system, you're creating a system. And I yeah. don't think that they could have picked better than Wayne Bennett and the proof's in the pudding. Yeah, and I mean, it, once even more so to your point, Kat, I mean, you know, Wayne Bennett, would, like he had a connection to Jermaine Osako previously. Yeah. He's had a connection to Jeremy Marshall King via his brother Benji for a long time. Like all these guys... He's got a connection to it. even the guys that he, you know, he coached during the 2020 Origin Series, um, you know, your Fleglers, your Josh Kerrs, these sort of guys that yeah. he brought to the club. So They're kind of like the, the fringe players, right? But yeah. he found a home for them all and it's it's kind of like for a terrible analogy, it's like he adopted a bunch of kids that didn't have homes or didn't feel welcome in their homes and created a home with them and he's done something beautiful. I actually don't think it's a terrible – I think it's yeah. actually a perfect analogy. It's exactly mm. what it is. He's taken – not a group of misfits but he's taken – like a lot of them were reserve graders. Yeah. The, the, that's the fucking reality of it. A lot of yeah. these guys were reserve graders and he's brought them in and they're going great guns. They've shocked the rugby league world in the first season. I think yeah. they've actually set an unrealistic standard for new teams 100%, coming in. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it will be interesting. I actually think your take on that cat, Wayne Bennett, mm. I think that's going to age incredibly well over the next few years. I hope so. Um, and I hope I'm wrong for Christian Wolf, who's going to take over there. But history tells us <sighs> it's like singing the the, the song mm. after Elvis. It's very very tough. Yeah. Um, let's move to the Canterbury Bulldogs. <sighs> Spicy. Yeah, really spicy. Mm. Um, Stephen Crichton's arrived at the club. Viliami Kikau's arrived at the club. Superstars of our game. I wouldn't say that they are the Jenga players just yet though. Mm. I was hoping by this point it would be Matty Burton, but I probably can't say it about Birdo. I want him to be and I think he will be eventually, but you probably couldn't say it about Birdo. Mm. I'll tell you what, Kat. It's a tough the one. guy I'm going to say is Jacob Preston. I like it. I genuinely I, – let's imagine a world where they didn't have Jacob Preston. That mm. means that Josh Curran would have to play on the edge and they literally have no middle forwards. Mm. I think that if you had to find a player that represents what the Canterbury Bulldogs are about and what their DNA is, I think it's Jacob mm. Preston. And, I, mate, he was playing for North Sydney 18 months ago in reserve grade. Pretty much yeah. unheard of. I really didn't know much about him when they signed him. I didn't really – Give it any more thought than okay, mm. he's in the 30, sure. Um, I, I'm hoping in 12 months' time we're talking about Reed, Matty Burton, Critter, yeah, these sort of guys. Josh Adokar, I'd have him right up there as well. But man, I reckon it might be Jacob Preston. No, I, I agree. And I think looking at the way that the dogs have built their team out, someone like Preston is so important to yeah. that struct, the structure of that team. But also, I like you know the fact that. You've mentioned that he really is just like the heart and soul of the Bulldogs. He's very authentic and real and genuine and I think he kind of embodies what they try to do as as a brand and as a team and he fits that mould perfectly. But I also think what we wanted to see from Reid Marnie, what we wanted to see from Birdo, what we hope to see from Critter is that Jenga player yeah. level of importance but I think we're yet to see that. So I think that Preston fits 
that description right now for them. Yeah, I, I think you could put Jacob Preston into any Bulldog side from the last 50 years yeah. in the back row and he would just fit in seamlessly. Yeah. He's just one of those players. Really interesting, Canterbury. I, I do hope in 12 months' time, though, Kat, that is a completely different conversation yeah. and we're talking about some of the guys in the spine because that's what they need. Jacob Preston as a back row can only do so much. Yeah. Um, and you even have a look at some of the great back rowers for Canterbury, like your, your, your Bobcat Ryans, your Willie Masons, these sort of guys, Josh Jackson. They're only, you know, they, they need the spine around them to be seriously contending for premierships and grand finals and whatnot. Yeah. Um, Kat, last team, the Parramatta Eels. We spoke about them a, a little bit this week, obviously released their jersey the other day, which was unreal. Um, I also think similar to Gold Coast Titans, they lost their Jenga player over the weekend, mm. Mitchie Moses. Thankfully, they are in a position where they have got one of the most talented ball players in the competition, Dill Brown, a mm. luxury to play him at 5'8". They can now move him to halfback. How he goes, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but I think it has to be Mitchie Moses. Yeah, I I do agree. Obviously, Mitch Moses's role in that team is unquestionable and similar to the Turbo conversation. You know, he's he's done a lot for New South Wales as well. He's really stepped up, you know, in, in Cleary. You could say Cleary shadow or whatever you want to say, but... Yep. You know, he's, he's stepped up in those moments too. He's, he's cemented himself as a fantastic player. I also would throw Gutho out there mm. as a key player too because I think when Gutho has a good game, the Eels have a good game. Yeah. I think Gutho is such a big one too because it, like I, I personally don't think Gutho is the most skillful and most talented no. fullback in the world but he's just all fucking ticker and effort. It, it, it's the ticker and yeah. this is what we were we were just talking off air about kind of when when we look at Friday's game between Bulldogs and South Sydney, what the Bulldogs have that South Sydney don't have right now is that ticker. It doesn't matter yeah. how polished you are. It doesn't matter how many times you've practised your kind of set pieces and you guys know what to do. If you don't go into that game with ticker, you will not win. Yeah. I think the other player I would mention would be Junior Bowler. Oh, yeah. I, I think just, for a similar reason in, in, in that he puts everything behind that. You – I quite team. often find with Parramatta games – if he's if he's the best forward on the field, they don't lose. Yeah, they simply don't. And quite often, when you get to the end of a game and it's a Parramatta loss, take the twenty twenty two grand final for example against Penrith. I go, just by their standards, Reg and Junior are pretty quiet. Yeah. Um. And you know, I I, th I think I really like what the coach is doing now. I imagine Junior probably hates it, but I love that he's putting him on the bench, mm. bringing him on after twenty minutes. Because uh, I think that's where Parramatta drop off when you see RCG and Junior walk off the field at the 20-minute mark. The opposition goes good as gold. Let's mm. roll now. Um, so, yeah, I really like that move. He'd be right up there. But when you've got a halfback like Mitchie Moses, who's yeah. one of the best in the competition, um, I think it's very, very hard to go past him. And I think there is probably no greater example, Cat, than round one this year. They're up by 20 points against Canterbury, I think it was, and he had a groin injury the entire time and they left him out there just to talk just to dictate terms, similar to what, you know, obviously on a very different stage, but similar to what the Roosters did in the grand final against Melbourne where they mm. just they kept Cooper Cronk out there even though he's injury and he was completely fucked, just to dictate terms and talk. So, But once again, in 10 weeks' time, Kat, we're going to be able to look back and go, okay, we just had a 10-week sample size of no Mitch Moses. Did Dill Brown step up? Did Gutho step up? Were they okay? Did they win six or seven or, out of ten? Or did someone else step up? Did someone else really yeah. step up? Yeah. It'll be very, very interesting to watch this Parramatta side. I I feel pretty confident in saying Moses is the Jenga player. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be a good little watch over the next few weeks. It will. I mean, a tough watch for those para fans mm. early on. But I think it's, it's kind of a luxury to be able to have, like, multiple names come up in this conversation. I mean, for some teams it's – it's day and night. Yeah. We know exactly who that key player is, but I think it's a good sign for the Eels that they've obviously got some depth to that side, which will help them with Moses being out. I think it could all I think it also really has the potential to be in a weird way. If Dill Brown really steps up over the next ten weeks and advances his game as a halfback, mm. it can only help you moving back to five eight. Mm. That could be the little silver lining that you could see Dill Brown take his game to a whole new level. Um, you'll probably have to pay him an absolute fortune yeah. on his next contract and yeah. other teams will chase him, but he yeah. has a real opportunity there to Definitely. excel his game even further. Yeah, I think his confidence was shaken a little last year with mm. all the drama that yeah. happened off the field and it's no denying that those things impact the games as well and you can see how their performance can 
be altered by whatever's happening behind the scenes as well. But I think he's come in this year and it's a, it's a new year and he's ready to just go on with, with business. And yep. I'm quite looking forward to seeing what Brown does this year. Yeah, I'm very excited to watch Brown over the next 10 weeks or so. All right, guys, that will do us for our Jenga player brought to you by Neds. Make sure you go head over to the app. You can follow the Rugby League Guru group on there and my profile. Stay up to date with all my tips, my bets, my predictions, all that sort of stuff. Uh, You can go in and copy my bets. You can change them and tweak them a little bit, add or minus certain things from them, whatever you see fit. But go over to the Neds app. Go and check it all out. We are always gambling responsibly, guys. Prices subject to change, and we will see you on the next episode. You win some, you lose more. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.